is Kent Cordry, and today I'm going to do the second in a series of hydrosleep videos, basically answering the second most common question that we get about the hydrosleep, and that would be, where is the check valve, and how does it work, and then in a follow-up video, we'll show how we know that it actually works, and we'll do some demonstrations using die columns later. But the first part is, where is the check valve in the hydrosleep? Now, when the hydrosleep was first developed in 1999, the check valve was actually a factory-made, spring-loaded, poppet-type check valve. And if Gina can kind of get in a little closer here. The way this worked is the check valve would open when the hydrosleep was moved upward, and if you see, the water pressure would push this down and allow water to flow into the sleeve. The top-loading check valve on the hydrosleeve coupled with a lay-flat polyethylene sleeve is actually what makes it a lot work the way it does. In other words, to simply allow you to collect a sample of a discrete interval in a monitoring well. Now, as the product evolved, we discovered that this check valve was a little crude. Actually, at the time we used this, it was cycled up and down. The hydro sleeve was actually cycled up and down in the well screen. When it moved up, the check valve would open, water would flow in. When we lowered it again, it would close, and we literally pumped the hydro sleeve up out of the well screen. We found that this particular check valve took a lot of pressure to open, it filled slowly, and uh, had a lot of other disadvantages. So over the last, actually, what is it, 11 years now, we've evolved to the point where this is a current hydro sleeve. The check valve is at the top also, but if you look right across here, what we have is another smaller sleeve on the inside of it, slightly smaller diameter than the outside sleeve. And the way this works, it's what we call a collapsing reed valve, and it's actually welded in position here. We're going to demonstrate a couple ways of how it works. Now, the first, I feel silly doing this, but you can imagine this being the reed valve inside the sampler. As the sampler moves up, water pressure on the inside is greater than on the outside. It allows the flood to flow through. As soon as the bag's full, though, the water pressure on the outside is greater than on the inside, so we do that by just inhaling. Can't say I didn't inhale. <laughs> and uh, the bag collapses on itself, prevents any water from escaping. Real quickly, I'm going to demonstrate this, and this will be sloppy. But this is a hydro sleeve, same thing. We just have a spring holding the top open, reed valves in here, but we cut the bottom off. And actually, I'm even going to take this off. So as we pour this dyed water through here, you'll see it just pretty much flows unimpeded through the sampler and out the bottom, OK? There's nothing really. The advantage of this type of check valve, there are numerous ones. Number one, it fills a lot faster. And now we just pull the hydro sleeve up in a single pull to fill it. Uh, two. It seals a lot easier, opens easier, and also we can package them in a flat packaging, which allows us to put up to 100 of them in an overnight envelope of this size. Now, if we try to pour the water through the other direction, we find that the check valve almost immediately closes and prevents the fluid from coming through. And I want to point out that none of these check valves have to seal absolutely airtight or watertight. And I don't know if you can even do something a little different. I'm going to pressurize this real quick. And you might be able to see from that end how the check valve closes. Or not. Mm. Too close? Yeah, it's not. Not focused? Yeah, okay. But. Now, another way to show this, and actually a cruder method, but it works really well, is I'm going to use the uh, actual hydro sleeve with the end still in the bottom. Open this up. Once again, this is where manual dexterity comes in. I'm just going to slip it over the end of the nozzle of a garden hose. And this will get sloppy, but what's going to happen when I turn the hose on, it's going to have a mixture of air and water shoot in there. You'll see the bag will expand to accommodate it, and then it's going to start spewing out all over the place when the check valve closes. But we're going to have about a large percentage of air in here, and obviously at the bottom of a well underneath the water tail, we are going to have wet air in the sampler, but you can see the check valve a lot easier when it's in air than you can in water. Okay? 
Now, if you can see that how the check valve is curved and pushed over against the side of the sampler, does see. that show? My hand out of there. There it is. Okay, maybe okay. too close. Try to hold it at some different angles, but the check valve is actually collapsed against the back side of the sampler here. Actually, if you look at that angle, you might be able to see where it's pushed there over. There it is. Better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the other way of demonstrating how the check valve closes, and you can see in this particular case, it closed pretty tight. Like I say, down hole, you aren't going to have air and water mix. It's just going to be water coming in, but the same thing happens. And as you can see with this check valve, it's very reliable. I mean, once the water tries to go the other direction, it'll collapse on itself. So hopefully that explains how the check valve works, where it is, and then our follow-up one is going to be a demonstration showing how we know it works, stays sealed going down, and stays sealed coming out. So thanks for watching. If you want to reach us, contact us at uh, info, what is it? Info hydrosleeve at hydrosleeve.com. Info at hydrosleeve.com or call 1-800-996-2225. Thanks a lot.